What would you say if you knew your time was running out? Just two days before Elvis Presley's untimely passing, he shared words so profound and unexpected that they still leave fans and loved ones questioning their meaning. In a private, emotional moment with his stepbrother, David Stanley, Elvis spoke with a depth and mystery that hinted at something far greater than anyone could have anticipated. What did he mean, and why does it continue to captivate us decades later? Stay with us as we uncover the heartfelt and enigmatic final words of the King of Rock and Roll. In the final chapter of his life, Elvis Presley faced battles that even his iconic smile and undeniable charisma could not conceal. Behind the dazzling stage lights and roaring applause lay a man grappling with a growing dependency on prescription medication, a struggle that began as a means to cope with the relentless pressures of fame. Pills to sleep, pills to wake, pills to perform, these became an inescapable part of his daily routine. As the years passed, the toll on his body and spirit became evident, with Elvis wrestling not just with his health, but also with the image he worked so hard to maintain. The king of rock and roll, once the epitome of youthful rebellion, now worried about his weight, his aging appearance, and a haunting fear. Would his fans still love him if they saw him as anything less than perfect? Adding to this burden was the release of a tell-all book by some of his closest confidants, Elvis. What happened? The book, filled with painful revelations about his private struggles, hit Elvis like a lightning bolt. It wasn't just a betrayal. It was a public dissection of his most personal battles. The idea of fans reading about his imperfections and his young daughter, Lisa Marie, potentially seeing him through that lens weighed heavily on his heart. The once invincible king now faced the devastating reality that even those he trusted most could expose his vulnerabilities. These revelations chipped away at his already fragile emotional state, leaving a shadow of doubt and despair in their wake. Yet, amidst the turmoil, there were glimmers of the deeply spiritual man that those closest to him knew. Elvis held on to his faith in God, seeking solace in the scriptures and spiritual writings that lined his bedside. His family and inner circle watched with concern as he wavered between hope and despair. They witnessed a man who, despite his struggles, still believed in something greater, an unwavering faith that provided him with moments of peace amid the chaos. But even for them, it became harder to distinguish whether his steadfast spirituality was a source of strength or a veiled cry for help. In what would become their final interaction, David Stanley recalls a moment with Elvis Presley that was as puzzling as it was poignant. Walking into Elvis's room just two days before the world would lose the king, David found him sitting on his bed, deeply immersed in his Bible. What started as a casual visit quickly turned into something unforgettable when Elvis broke the silence with a question that froze David in his tracks. David, who am I? The question wasn't laced with humor or vanity. Instead, it carried an air of solemnity, as though Elvis was searching for an answer to something far greater than himself. When David replied, You're Elvis, you're the king, Elvis raised his Bible and softly corrected him, No, there's only one king. What followed was a heartfelt embrace that seemed to linger longer than usual, as if Elvis was reluctant to let go. Then came the cryptic words that have haunted David ever since. The next time you see me will be on a higher place in a different plane. At the time, David brushed it off, assuming it was just one of Elvis's philosophical musings inspired by the spiritual books that filled his room. But in hindsight, the weight of those words is impossible to ignore. Was Elvis offering a farewell cloaked in spirituality? Or was he simply reflecting on his faith? The ambiguity of his statement leaves behind an aura of mystery and an eerie sense that perhaps he knew something no one else did. These moments, steeped in emotion and spiritual undertone, still resonate, leaving those who hear the story wondering what Elvis truly meant. Elvis Presley's final words to his stepbrother leave us with lingering questions that defy easy answers. 
Could this have been his way of foreshadowing his own passing? The cryptic nature of his statements, coupled with the timing, feels almost too poignant to be coincidence. Was this a deeply spiritual goodbye, delivered by a man who perhaps sensed his time on earth was drawing to a close? Or was it a reflection of his ongoing struggles, a quiet admission that the pressures of life had become insurmountable? These questions haunt the minds of those who knew him best and continue to fascinate fans around the world. Adding to the mystery is the story of a letter allegedly found beside Elvis's lifeless body by his close friend, Joe Esposito. According to Esposito, the letter contained raw and deeply personal reflections, including a regret over losing Priscilla and a confession of his inability to escape his inner demons. Yet, in a controversial decision, Esposito claims he burned the letter to protect Elvis's family from the weight of its revelations. Was this letter a final cry for help, an expression of his pain, or something else entirely? And with the letter destroyed, the truth remains forever out of reach, leaving us with only theories and an enduring sense of intrigue about the king's final hours. In his final conversation with David Stanley, Elvis Presley revealed a poignant blend of vulnerability and faith that continues to echo through the years. David recalls that beneath the surface of Elvis's calm demeanor was a man grappling with the weight of his struggles. Yet, even in his most challenging moments, Elvis held tightly to his belief in God, finding solace in scripture and spiritual teachings. It was as though he sought refuge in something far greater than the fame and pressures that had consumed much of his life. This unyielding faith provided him with moments of clarity, where he seemed at peace with the battles he could not win, but still determined to hold on to hope. The emotional resonance of his words has left a lasting impact on those who hear them. Elvis's quiet acknowledgement of his personal demons, paired with his unwavering spirituality, paints a picture of a man who was both human and extraordinary. His ability to admit his flaws while holding on to his faith is a testament to the depth of his character. For David, those final sentiments were not just words, but a profound and heartfelt message, a parting gift from the king that speaks to his eternal desire to be understood and loved beyond his public persona. It's a moment that adds layers to Elvis's legacy, reminding us of the man behind the legend. Decades after his passing, Elvis's fans and family continue to grapple with the emotional weight of his words and the circumstances of his final days. For many, these sentiments serve as a reminder of the vulnerabilities that even the greatest icons face. His family treasures the memory of the man they knew, a father, a brother, and a friend, while his fans hold on to the lessons his life and struggles impart. The king of rock and roll may no longer be with us, but his words, his music, and his spirit endure, resonating across generations and ensuring that his legacy will never fade. If you've enjoyed exploring this heartfelt and mysterious chapter of Elvis Presley's life, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more captivating stories about the king of rock and roll. If you found this video intriguing, give it a thumbs up and share it with fellow Elvis fans who would love to join the conversation. And most importantly, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you think Elvis was saying goodbye in his final words, or was it simply a moment of spiritual reflection? We can't wait to hear your take.